The United States Geological Survey has confirmed that a quake measuring 7.2 on the Richter scale hit the Fox Islands region of the Aleutian Islands Thursday night. The quake hit just two days after a 5.1 magnitude earthquake hit the Rat Islands region nearby. This is significant as it is the latest in a surge of earthquakes which are daily peppering the ring of fire in the recent period. Here are some others from the last week to broaden out the picture. On Saturday night, the northern coast of Peru experienced a magnitude 5 earthquake. Earlier in that morning, a 5.2 tremor was recorded in the eastern New Guinea region of Papa. On Monday, a strong earthquake struck the Antofagosta region of Chile. On Tuesday, a magnitude 5.2 quake struck New Zealand. The epicenter of this quake was located about four miles from Christ Church which has been shaken by thousands of aftershocks since their infamous February 22nd quake. On Wednesday, the Catamarca region of Argentina experienced a 5.3 earthquake. Also on Wednesday night, a 6.7 earthquake struck off the coast of Honshu, Japan, prompting authorities to issue a tsunami alert for the northeast section of the country. The magnitude 7.2 earthquake that just struck Alaska's Aleutian Islands Thursday night is a warning for the United States. After the March 11th earthquake in Japan, LaRouche Pack went on record warning about the increasing threat of devastating earthquakes, specifically around the Pacific Ring of Fire. Right now, the west coast of the United States is next in line for a great quake along either the Cascadian subduction zone affecting the Pacific Northwest or the San Andreas Fault Zone affecting California. And people there know it. On Tuesday, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released a study on the effects of a major earthquake in Southern California. The Bureau states that a 7.8 magnitude quake on the San Andreas could affect 430,000 businesses and 4.5 million workers. This would kill the state of California and the surrounding regions. Such a threat should be taken very seriously and acted on. But here is what the United States Geological Survey, a federal scientific agency under our worse than useless President Obama, has to say about it. A temporal increase in earthquake activity does not mean that a large earthquake is about to happen. Similarly, quiescence, or the lack of seismicity, does not mean a large earthquake is going to happen. A temporary increase or decrease in the seismicity rate is usually just part of the natural variation in the seismicity. There is no way for us to know whether or not this time it will lead to a larger earthquake. Now, this is not true. The earthquake activity in just this past year is not normal, it's abnormal, and it's very dangerous. Maybe Obama can't figure out what causes earthquakes, but if he supported a real science policy in the United States, like Kennedy, instead of pushing a British monitorist policy, we could understand what causes them and how to predict them. In fact, as we have covered on this site in the past weeks, there is growing evidence that we could indeed forecast earthquakes if the proper government actions were taken. There is something deeper at play here. There is mounting evidence that earthquakes and other tectonic activity coincides in part with solar phenomena. The increasing earthquake, volcano, and weather damage we have recently experienced actually coincides with a period of change in the activity of our solar system as a whole. In order to understand the cause of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and even severe weather, it is therefore necessary to take into account what the sun and the rest of the solar system is doing. For example, could the recent outbreak of giant storms on Saturn be related to the outbreak of violent tornadoes in the United States on Earth? Or is the recent outbreak of volcanism on Saturn's moon Enceladus related to the recent outbreak of the rim of fire volcanism? How about the sun? We do know that the sun right now is going through a shift in its activity. For example, 
the American Astronomical Society forecasts a dramatically weakened solar magnetic field when we come out of our unusual solar maximum in 2013. It is true. Observing simple correlations does not produce scientific discovery. But neither does assuming that the events on Earth are caused by phenomena on the Earth. Science proceeds by recognizing that specific events are always driven by universal principles, which are not sense perceptible. Therefore, we must begin, at the very least, on the scale of the galaxy and work down to how these larger processes interact to produce effects here on the Earth. This brings us back to Obama. At this moment, we do not yet understand the cause of things like earthquakes. But keeping Obama in office is a good way to forever prevent our understanding. Besides rebuilding the Army Corps of Engineers to deal with the impending disasters that we are now facing, we must immediately move to set up a network of earthquake precursor monitoring stations, supplemented by a rapidly enhanced coverage by NASA and other satellites to monitor conditions in our sun, the solar system, and the rest of the galaxy. We should do all of this, beginning with the impeachment of Obama, before the American West Coast falls victim to a series of deadly earthquakes.